Some of the very best coaches in women's college basketball have passed through East Lansing, Michigan, and have built a tradition at Michigan State. This past st spring, just the sixth head coach in program history took over, and she is bringing an impressive resume back to her home state. We're going to talk about it all today right here on Locked on Women's Basketball. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Happy Monday, friends. It is July 31st, 2023, and I hope that the heat wave that has been blanketing the U.S. is not covering you where you are today. I am Missy Heydrich, National Women's Basketball Correspondent here at the Next. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at Missy Heydrich and be sure to follow this podcast at Lockdown Women's Basketball, and then you have to go over and see us at our website, at thenexthoops.com, because we've got you covered. Well, the Big Ten is one of the toughest women's basketball conferences in the country, and Michigan State has ridden the wave of wins and losses, successes, and some tough times over the course of the past few seasons. And this past spring, a head coaching change was made and ushers in a new era for MSU women's basketball. I am so excited to talk with the newest head Spartan, and that is head coach Robin Fralick. Coach, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. It's great to meet you. Thanks so much for having me. Great to meet you too. Absolutely. All right. Now this is going to be your first year at Michigan State, but will be your ninth year overall as a head coach. Mm -hmm. Five years as a head coach at Bowling Green. Your team was 31 and seven this past year, second in the MAC WNIT semifinal appearance. You put together an impressive resume, but yet I know that the past few months probably have been a complete and utter whirlwind for <laughs> you and for your family and everyone involved. But when your phone rang last March, um, what was it about this job for you? I mm -hmm. always ask coaches, I say, why? Why Michigan State for Robin Freilich? Well, you, you know, and in this world and in this profession, uh, for me, it's not just a job decision, it's a life decision. And, um, you know, my husband, we actually met through coaching. He was a college coach. He, he's still really involved with basketball and coaching. And then I have a, a 10 and a six year old. Um, and my husband's also actually from Michigan. So um, just the combination of the opportunity, um, we feel like Michigan State is a really prestigious university and has a real um, allure with its basketball. You know, between the women's program success and tradition, uh, coupled with the men's basketball program success and Coach Izzo and all he's done here during his time. Um, and then, you know, you combine that with the opportunity to be close to all of your family. You know, I feel just really fortunate because in coaching, oftentimes you you don't get the combination. Um, yeah. So for us, the life decision piece just made a lot of sense. Um, when you were introduced at your press conference, your new boss, who's the athletic director yeah. there at Michigan State, Alan Holler, he talked um, about your resume, that it speaks for itself in terms of winning championships, which you did at the Division II level at Ashland University, turning around a program like Bowling Green. Um, that's what he and everybody wants at Michigan State, as you said, prestige and mm -hmm. a, a tradition of success. So as you look forward now, what is the foundation that you take from your past experiences into this new job there in East Lansing? Well, you know, I've been fortunate to coach at a lot of levels. And I think when you come up through Division II, you learn a lot um, because you have to do a lot because there's just less people, <laughs> yeah. less resources. So I think you learn to be a little creative and, and you get an opportunity to sort of make mistakes. And, you know, it's, it's not as um, in the public eye. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really grateful that that was sort of the foundation of where I've really got an opportunity to learn a lot about coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and then taking over at Bowling Green, you know, that was a different opportunity at, at Ashland. I slid over a seat and took over a really good team. You know, we got to Bowling Green and we were in a position with a team that just great tradition. We had uh, a great fan base resources. Just the team had not been successful for a little while and kind of needed a little boost. So mm -hmm. you come in and that's a completely different challenge. Yeah. Um, and, and it was a challenge, 
you know, I remember <laughs> thinking there was a lot of days thinking, oh my goodness. Um, but you just stick with it. And, and, you know, I was fortunate too. I, I had to hire a new staff because coming from division two, I didn't have a staff. And, and now we've all worked together for five seasons and for them to come with me in this opportunity. Okay. Now this is another challenge, higher level, some of the best basketball in the world. Um, but what is a little different is our staff has worked together for five years before this. So there's a little bit more of me being able to just say, Hey, get this done, get this done, get this done. And everybody kind of knows um, how we work and sort of the flow chart. So everyone has presented a new challenge, Yeah. Um, but I'm grateful for the experiences that I've had. And I'm, and I'm, you know, really grateful that I was at division two for so long. Cause I, I just think that there's a lot that gets learned um, when you have to do a lot. And I think so much of it in coaching is also the people that you not only have worked for is, or the people that you work with. And you mm -hmm. mentioned your staff, but I know you had the experience of working under a, someone like Sue Ramsey, who was mm -hmm. a division two hall of famer and, and, basically built that program at Ashland that you took over and were able to continue that success. What were some of the things that you took from someone like coach Ramsey, maybe, you know, a tidbit here or there that you've carried on now into this next phase of your career at Michigan state. Well, I think what separates coach Ramsey and so much of who you become as a coach is who you grow up under, you know, that, that is, that is so true. It was kind of like, who, who did you learn from? Who did you grow up under? And I think what stands out about her is she is, she loves what she does, you know, in the world of coaching that can be contentious and highs and lows and peaks and valleys. And she had a, a permeating joy. She loved to coach. She loved the kids. Um, every day in the gym was a great day for her. And uh, our kids, they respond to that. You know, people want to be somewhere uh, where the where the gym is a place you want to go. And I yeah. thought she always created an environment of the gym being a place that people wanted to go and people wanted to be a part of. And she treated people with respect and love and, and kindness. And ultimately the basketball piece was very important for her, but ultimately she wanted to see them ready to launch transform, you know, that their opportunity there and then they go into the world and stay in touch and stay connected. And so I just learned so much, like nobody could steal her joy, you know, in the world of coaching, <laughs> it's easy to get grumpy and, frustrated and all these things like she nobody could steal her joy she had this just enduring joy um to what she did and and i learned a lot through that um you know i think there's a way that you can connect with with players and with kids that keeps that love of basketball in them um and then when you can collectively get that good things happen I had a chance to talk with uh, Jenny Baranchik uh, yeah. uh, during her first year at yeah. Oklahoma. Um, very similar probably to you and your experiences. Coming from a mid-major, headed to a P5 school, but also taking over from a very successful predecessor. Yeah. Um, your move to Michigan State reminds me a lot of what I think Jenny had found with Sherry Cole at Oklahoma, mm -hmm. because you are coming in behind someone like Susie Merchant, who has been um, a fixture in the Big Ten, mm -hmm. USA basketball, and obviously just in the state of Michigan itself in women's basketball. How is that foundation that not only she, but maybe the other coaches have come through there? We talked about you just being the sixth in the program history. How does that tradition help you in setting this new era of Spartan basketball? Yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it. Susie, uh, Coach Merchant was, you know, a fixture at this university in this program. A ton of success. Um, I mean, just have a lot of respect for her and everything she did here for a long time. You know, I always think that stands out to me, too, in coaching is uh, same with with Coach Ramsey, who I worked for. You know, just the ability to do it at a high level for a long time um, is a real separator. So, you know, that was something attractive about the position, too. You're walking, you know, you're coming into a program that had had um, a really good foundation to it. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it's a challenge. Um, but I'm also just grateful um, to to be in this position and to be you know, kind of coming in behind somebody who put so much into the program um, and put so much just sort of in, in, into the community right. and made women's basketball here um, something for people to care about. When you looked at this, you know, you start going through all of the pros and cons. You have the conversation yeah. with your husband and your family and everybody <laughs> else. Is this the type of thing where you say, OK, this is a rebuild or is this a retool? Is this a freshen mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. has been there before? You know, the, I got asked this a while ago, too. And I think, you know, the mentality our staff has and I have is it's just we're building, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that 
when you come in new, that's your building. I mean, we, it's a different style of play, you know, some of the things we do probably are just a little bit different. And so we're just building, you know, every day you build trust, every day you build habits, every day you build standards. So, you know, that's just been sort of our mentality. And, and what's interesting is when I was the head coach at Bowling Green, you know, we finished the bottom of the league uh, my first two years as head coach. And in our third year, we won the league. So we literally went from last place to first place. And so I would get asked all the time, well, what happened this year? <laughs> you know, what happened this year? What ha-? And it was like, nothing happened. This happened from the first day we got here on day one. Mm -hmm. It just building takes time, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're starting to do things a little bit of a different way and a little bit of a um, different style. So um, same, you know, the same approach. Our staff has always operated sort of out of that same framework. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk with Coach Fralick about building the culture of this program and the right roster for them in what is the wild, wild west of the crazy <laughs> times of college basketball. But first, a message from our friends at FanDuel. It is time to take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you're going to land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who do you think is going to hit that first home run, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. The, the, we know that the pennant race is coming. It is getting tight. Everybody's got to get there. So there's no better place to bet on the MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. Hi, everyone. I am Missy Heidrich. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. For our everydayers tomorrow on the show, more women's basketball and WNBA coverage with our fearless leader, Howard Megdahl. And I am here with the new head coach of the Michigan State Spartans, Robin Fralick, the 2021 MAC Coach of the Year at Bowling Green. And Coach, one of the things that breeds success and everyone who has talked about you taking over this program taking this job at Michigan State is, is that it's about culture. And that is one of those big words that everybody throws out there in college sports, I think especially in athletics. And mm -hmm. change is never easy. But when you talked about your core values in your press conference, which I thought was really interesting, you said you called them traveling core values. It's not just something that sits on a board that just is static. Can you talk a little bit about how you implement that and what that means to this build that you've got going on at Michigan mm -hmm. State? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. These are core values I've had at, uh, everywhere I've coached. So Division II, you know, um, at, at Bowling Green and now at Michigan State. So what, what's cool about them is they're transferable. You know, they're human, they're human to human uh, values. And so, you know, something that we do, one, we, we spend a lot of time on them. So we don't just have these words and then have these expectations that everyone in the program is going to understand what they mean. We actually do labs and, and connect together about, okay, what does this mean in our program? And what does this mean to you? What does this mean to us? Let's give some practical application of what this is going to look like day to day. Um, we also talk about them every day. So every day in our pre huddle before practice starts, you know, we go around and um, if it's be a great teammate, we're going around and we're identifying that happening. And it could be within the team and it could be just in our normal lives, but we're going to pay attention to um, what that looks like to be a really good teammate. Um, and so what, what we say too, is it's not, it's not like, Hey, one day we're going to do team bonding and now all of a sudden we have a culture, right? Or one day we're going to do team bonding. And now we have this assumption that we're all so connected. Yeah. Um, our staff operates out of the framework that at, you're building culture every day, mm -hmm. right? It's an every day and everything. It's it's how you walk into the gym, right? It's the way that you're intentionally connecting with kids, whether it's before practice, during practice, after practice. Like there has to be a constant intentionality um, around what that looks like. So it, it's a little bit hard to explain. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but what we do know is that it's it's in everything that we're planning. Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, the hope and the goal is that if you were to ask any kid on the team, what's our core values and what do they mean? They can say them and they can explain them Mm -hmm. because they're not just, oh, yeah, I think coach talked about that once when, you know, when I was on a recruiting visit. Um, But it becomes sort of the center, the center of your huddle. It becomes the center of who you are. And it becomes important to everyone, not just important to me, uh, but important to everyone in the program you set standards. And so when you think about that, then that standard also has to be about how you put this team together. And Mm -hmm. as we just said a moment ago, college basketball, it's a little bit of the wild, wild West. So let's, let's focus in a minute about this roster. Rebuilding usually means you're going to have some new faces that you have used the portal. Uh, You have returners. This roster is going to have five underclassmen on it, but yet three of your top five scores are coming back from a year ago. Mm -hmm. Would you look at what maybe you needed, what you holes that had to be filled? What does this roster look like for you? And what has impressed you so far with the women in your program that you've seen on the floor? Yeah, I mean, what's impressed me so far is, um, you know, in this world where it's easy to move and shift and do something new. And, you know, there was a lot of change for this team this year. There was just a lot of things that went on Mm -hmm. um, between, you know, coaching change and, you know, they're, they're resilient. And so I just have a lot of respect for them for staying, Mm -hmm. you know, and sticking it out. And a a big piece of that too, is they love Michigan state, which I think, you know, that says a lot too, that the university really it's, it's about basketball, but they also really have a pull here at the university. So that piece. And then the second piece is, I just think it's really easy to be resistant to change. So I'm, I'm not naive to like change is hard. It can be frustrating, it can be exciting, it can be confusing. Uh, but they have, they really have done a good job of embracing, learning. Um, when, when things that aren't clear, they don't understand, asking questions to make sure we're on the same page. So, uh, you know, overall, I've just felt, I've, I just have a lot of respect for them. You know, one of the first things we talked about was respect. You know, that's a way we're going to coach them in a respectful way, but we have an expectation of that that in return. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, the new kids too, it's been fun. It's been a fun combination of, I've, I've been impressed with how the returners have embraced the new kids. And there's really been a, a pretty cool connection through that. And, you know, interestingly, I got hired beginning of April, you know, our BG team played, played really, really late, mm-hmm. um, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, but then that also is makes, you know, the portal had been open already, I think for a week, few, yes. maybe a month, yeah. Maybe yeah. A month. Um, you know, and obviously, um, th- that impacts what that looks like. But, you know, the, the, the kids that we had that came in new through the portal and are incoming freshmen have, um, they've been great. And so, you know, we'll know more. I think right now I'm still learning a lot. You know, I'm going to learn a lot about the league, mm-hmm. what that means. Um, but I do know they've shown up and the gym has been a really cool place to be. As you've been in the gym over the spring and the summer months with workouts, both team-wise, individual, you know, we know over the course of many years, all the NCAA rules have changed here and there. They give you more time. Mm -hmm. What have been the pleasant surprises that you've seen on the floor? You talk about that culture. You talk about how they've been, you know, Mm -hmm. becoming together as a team. But when you talk about X's and O's, what are some of the things that have stood out for you in terms of execution, what they've Mm -hmm. embraced and what they're getting to be better at in the gym? Well, yeah, we, we have a lot to, the offense is totally new. So that is, um, <laughs> we just have a lot to learn with that, which, yeah. which is, it's a good reminder for me too, of when it's new for everyone. Um, but what I've been impressed with one, they've been working hard, you know, while we're in the gym together, but on their own, you know, mm-hmm. we've had kids cause I, you know, I share with them all the time with the resources we have here. We just, there's no excuses. You know, this, this is, if you want to be, a, this is what it looks like if you want to be elite. You know, this is what the opportunities and resources look like, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and I like our speed. You know, I don't I, I've been impressed. I'm, I, I'll be curious what that looks like, you know, in the Big Ten. I'll be curious what that looks like at all five spots. But um, I do think we have some good versatility and some good speed. Um, and so, you know, making sure we figure out how to use that. All right. In a moment, looking ahead to this 23-24 season for Coach Fralick in Michigan State. Life in the Big Ten, which is not easy. And then maybe some things we'll see on the floor from the Spartans in just a moment. Yeah. 
Hi, everyone. I am Missy Heydrich. Thank you for joining us here on Locked On Women's Basketball. And it has been a pleasure to have Robin Fralick, the new head coach at Michigan State, with us here today. All right, Coach, um, you take over a program. You come from Bowling Green where you had great success. And then, whoa, congratulations. Welcome to the Big Ten Conference. <laughs> Not an easy place to battle night in and night out. Uh, I believe seven teams in the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament a year ago. Uh, I asked this to another new head coach in, a, in another league a couple weeks ago. What about this league excites you? And then what is keeping you up at night? <laughs> <laughs> what excites? I mean, it's the best of the best. You yeah. know, if you, if, you want to really be challenged at the highest level. This is what it looks like. You know, seven teams, the NCAA tournament, Iowa in the national championship game, um, more coverage than ever. Women's basketball is at a higher level than ever. So th those things are, are really exciting. And and at, we are at a university where basketball has always had a, an alluring tradition. So um, being part of that is really cool. What keeps me up at night? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> All the things, right? I mean, yes. sometimes when you're new, you're worried about what you're not even sure you should be worried about. So, right. um, but, you know, I, honestly, you know, we just moved here. My family just all got settled in. And so there's a lot of things that keep me up at night. But I think to stay in this profession and to enjoy it, you know, there's also a lot of things that I've been able to put my head on my pillow at night and just be really grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's talk style X's and O's. Yeah. Um, you mentioned speed just a little bit ago. So what will we see from the Spartans this year? And how do you think that fits in to what the Big Ten has traditionally been over the last couple of years? Well, what's unique about the Big Ten, too, is there's a lot of different styles and different ones have been successful. You know, there hasn't been just one style that has dominated the league. You know, mm -hmm. how you look at even the top teams from last year, they all play have their, they all have a unique identity. Yeah. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it's similar. It's being really good at what you're really good at, you know, and obviously recruiting and all that has a big piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're looking at style, I think I'm still figuring that out. I still have a lot to learn with our team because I think it's a little foolish to say, well, this is just how we play no matter what, right? I think right. you have to be able to adjust and adapt and put your kids in good situations with who you have and what you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at from a stylistic perspective over my career, you know, some things that stand out is we've been real disruptive. Like this past season at Bowling Green, we were second in the country in turnover margins. So forced a lot of turnovers while taking good care of the ball. You know, you always have to find ways to win possessions. That could be forcing turnovers, forcing bad shots, rebounding the ball at a high level. Um, so we're going to try to do that, right? I think finding ways to win possessions and be good at that is going to matter. That is how I like to coach. That is what we're comfortable with. And I do think we have a team um, that can find ways to be disruptive. We're just going to have to figure out what way that looks. Like we've done it in the full court. We've done it in the half court. You mm -hmm. know, we've done it both ways. Um, when I was the head coach at Bowling Green. So kind of putting that together. And then offensively, a, a trademark of teams I've coached have always been we play together, we share the ball, and we fight for the best shot. We haven't really ever played one player dominating the ball. You know, we've really played off ball movement, player movement. Um, and and you that takes time because you got to kind of learn how to move together and trust yeah. each other in that. So um, that is always our preference. But same thing, you know, we're going to see what – our kids are real good at, and we're going to try to put them in positions to be successful. There is a ton of balance in this league, but I think what also becomes interesting is, is that you have two very good programs in the Big Ten in the state of Michigan. So what does that rivalry, so to speak, with Michigan, what Kim's Barnary, Kim barnes Rico has built at, um, at Michigan, what does that look like for you? What's that conversation? Do you hear that from fans? Do you hear it from the alumni of the program? Is it part of the recruiting that you're now involved in? Is is that you want to keep the best in Michigan? Mm -hmm. How do you not get them to go to the University of Michigan and come to East Lansing? Yeah, it's what makes it really fun. I mean, it's a it's a true rivalry. You know, I mean, it is a passionate uh -huh. rivalry from us to our athletes to our fans. Um, so that's going to be part of it. You know, we, when I was at BG, us in Toledo had a rivalry like that 20 minutes apart and, um, really similar, you know, in the same league and in a similar blueprint. So, um, I think both of us probably have preferences and types of kids we recruit and, yeah. you know, Michigan is obviously going to be a really important piece for us and, and the Midwest. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it's what makes it really fun. I mean, not that many teams have a rivalry like that, right? Same state, same blueprint right down the road. Um, so it's going to be exciting to compete in that. Now, this Michigan State campus as a whole um, had a, a whole host of things that it mm-hmm. dealt with this year. Um, with the tragedy that happened on campus, it was in the middle of the se- basketball season. I think it would reverberates not only on the campus community, but all throughout East Lansing and I think the state of Michigan as well. As you've come back to your home state now and you've looked at what that experience was on mm-hmm. the campus, What's that feel? Do you think that this is a even tighter knit community than maybe it was before because of those experiences? Yeah, I mean, tough things always bring people together. You know, when you go through something um, tough like that, it is it is really connecting. So, you know, same thing coming in new. I, I've just had a lot of respect for the resilience of our team, the resilience of this community and the university and the connectedness. You know, they're, they're, that does bring you together. Mm-hmm. I think you realize that the fragility of life, right? And um, you kind of feel more in it together. And I, and you also feel more protective of, of your university and of Michigan State and uh, making sure that, that we get through it. You mentioned your husband. You've got two kids. Um, you know, I'm a working mom of two, and I can't even imagine what that load looks like for someone in your position as a head coach of a P5 program. So just tell me, how are, how are your kids? How is your husband? How has all of this happened? You said everybody's now finally all there together. I know it's not been easy, but it's probably got to be a really great feeling to have everybody back home in your yeah. home state. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. I mean, the, tra- the transition is so layered. And I think sometimes if you're not in this world, you don't understand. Like, you know, sometimes people think it's just a job. You're, you're yeah. moving. No, you're, you know, you're leaving a community. You're leaving really good friends, um, moving, you know, if I, moving is like, it's gotta be top five, like least favorite things, you know, to do. it's just, um, but it, it's, I've been, um, kind of taken back by how just connected the community is. If, for example, this was our first weekend and my son is 10 and actually one of the neighbor boys who's his age reached out to him ahead and said, Hey, I know, like, basically I know you're moving in and new and do you want to play in this three on three basketball tournament with me this weekend? You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, those are the sorts of things that always reminds me too, of how much it matters to, you know, to be a good neighbor. Like sometimes if you haven't had to move, you don't kind of realize how, how challenging that can be. So, you know, his first weekend here, he's playing in a three on three tournament. He's already got some new buddies and, you know, we've had people swing by and stop by. And so that transition for my kids has been really hard. Yeah. You know, because, they're, they were old enough to have friends and feel really, yes. really connected in that. And yet our first weekend here, they're already finding some new ones. So um, the layered piece to it is is, is nuanced, um, mm-hmm. but it's exciting. Like I always think you can hold the duality of life. Like you can be sad to leave somewhere and excited, excited for what's new. So we're kind of, we're, we're operating in that. Um, and then my family has been diehard Spartan fans. So, you know, I've shared that multiple times, but that, you know, my mother-in-law still stares at me every day and is, you know, she went to Michigan State and she just sort of can't believe it, you know, like she's been cheering for Michigan State her whole life. So there's, um, it, it, we're, we're excited to be together. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And the boxes will get unpacked eventually. That part, so that's the least of your worries at this point in time. Okay, uh, I've got one more question for you. I'd love to ask everybody this, um, especially coaches. I have, I asked student athletes and players. So other now you're familiar with Michigan State. Some people go in a new place and they just move and it's totally brand new. But other than the arena, the practice gym, your office, um, what would be Coach Fralick's favorite place on the Michigan State campus? Well, probably the dairy store because they have <laughs> just absolutely delicious ice cream and it is awesome. not very far from me here either the Breslin and my kids love it too. Okay. Well, that's perfect. I've had, I've had endorsements for coffee shops, for Rose gardens, for entrances. Yeah. And now it's the dairy store at <laughs> Michigan State University. So I next, uh, if I get to East Lansing, I'm going to get ice cream. That's just yeah. the only way this is going to we'll go. go together. <laughs> okay. That sounds like a fantastic deal. Well, coach, I want to say thank you for coming on Locked on Women's Basketball. It's exciting to have a new coaching face, uh, one of a couple that will be in the Big Ten this year. 
I know there's a lot on your plate, but there's going to be a lot of excitement, not only on your campus, but in this league as the season progresses. And we will be watching at the next and at Locked On Women's Basketball. So thank you so very much. Thanks so much for having me. Well, you can find me, Missy Heydrich, on Twitter, at Missy Heydrich, and then all of my amazing colleagues. You've got to get over to The Next at www.thenexthoops.com and follow this podcast at Locked On WBB. Thank you, everybody, for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. For our everydayers tomorrow on the show, as we always say, more women's basketball and the best WNBA coverage with Howard Megdal and additional all week and Saturday right here on the podcast. We will see you next time, and we will also be watching what happens in East Lansing in the 23-24 season.